We have our annual Music Icons auction at the Hard Rock Cafe in New York City on May 18th and 19th with some amazing guitars. We have a really famous guitar. It's the Bob Dylan slash Robbie Robertson guitar. It could be that this is absolutely one of the most historic instruments that I've ever heard of in the whole story of rock and roll. It's a 1965 Fender Telecaster guitar. And so when I think back on all of the songs that I've played on this, there's like hundreds. Such a famous guitar, and boy, if that guitar could tell stories. Most of the early Telecasters were like a cream-colored instrument with the white pickguard, and then we, we asked if they would have one in black. It just seemed like that might look good, and they, they did, so they sent this one. This guitar was originally black, and then I used it so much that the paint started to chip off, and because, and I didn't want all of those pieces missing. So then I just had them scrape the rest of the paint off because it was like the wood thing. I wanted to feel the wood and, and everything. And then over time we tried, you know, I put in this Gibson pickup because it gave it a thicker tone here that I wanted. And I kept changing pickups and, and doing everything I could trying to make it better and better, and it kept getting better and better too. It has been such an influential guitar used by Dylan, played by Dylan. When we went to Nashville and were recording the album Blonde on Blonde, it was the guitar that, that Bob uh, was using on that record, on the, on the songs that he played on electric. But the, the tour of 1965, his going electric, tour in 66 around the world. The guitar really became very famous for the electric tour. And back then, this was the guitar that Bob used. And he used this instrument. And this instrument remembers that everywhere we played around the world back then, when we came out to play, people booed. The crowd didn't know how to react. They were booing, they were unsure. This was new, this was different. This guitar has been cheered and jeered everywhere in the world over the years. There was a move away from Dylan, their folk artists that they knew and loved. You know, and it was historic and gigantic, the whole thing, you know, and things were never the same. You know, when, it, when that, something like that's going on, you don't really, you don't really understand what it is. You're just kind of putting your head down and charging forward. And you don't find out until later on that you were really part of a musical revolution. And what you were doing was going to change music forever. But you don't know that when it's happening. Maybe this guitar did, but I didn't, you know. Uh, the band did a live album called Rock of Ages. We, we recorded it at the Academy of Music in New York City. And on the, f the final night was New Year's Eve. We played there four nights. And Bob came and joined us for the encore. And he had a guitar with him, but he, d he just didn't look comfortable with it. And the thing was, it was tough to get in tune and everything. So I said, here, uh, let me take that. You play this. And it ended up back in his hands. So uh, that was nice to see too. And there's some great pictures, you know, of him playing it. And you think about all those major performances. You think of all the songs that were written on this guitar. It's a real war horse, you know, taking it out of storage and everything and thinking, boy, if this thing could talk, the stories it could tell, but it nearly can talk. But opening this case and looking at this particular instrument, it just, it gave me a shiver for a moment because of all of, the, all of the places it has been and as much music that has come out of these strings. This guitar was Robbie Robertson's baby, if you will, because it was such an important guitar for him. He loved that guitar. It's been everywhere, seen everything. And over time, I was always trying to find a guitar that I liked better, that played better and I couldn't beat it. He was always drawn to this 1965 Fender Telecaster. On the band's first album, Music from Big Pink, the first guitar 
lick on the on the record, it, it goes. So in the song Tears of Rage, that's what I played in the, in the intro on it. And then eventually when we were playing live, on the wait, I didn't play uh, the acoustic guitar because of, you know, back then it was hard to hear sometimes an acoustic. So I ended up just, it, you know, just changing the intro on electric. And I got used to playing it on the, elec the electric, and it was like, that's the way it always was to me. The guitar kind of became my main instrument. I used it for years and years and years, and took it everywhere, and used it on all the records. It was, it was my go-to instrument. He used it so often, and used it in so many performances, recordings. And I used it on the basement tapes, and then I used it on the band's first album, music from Big Pink, and the band album, and the Stage Fright album, and the concerts we played at Woodstock, and the Isle of Wight, and Watkins Glen. All the people that were surrounded or had an opportunity to hold it or play with it, like Eric Clapton. There was a, a tour that the band was doing, and uh, Eric Clapton sat in with us, and he used this guitar. But lots and lots of people over the years, George Harrison played it. Eric Clapton and George Harrison were influenced by the music that was created with, with this guitar. All kinds of people have laid their hands on this instrument over the years. And, you know, Julian's auctions, you know, when they heard about this, they said, oh my God, it would be great if this guitar could end up in, in some collection or some place that it would be so appreciated. Um, and I said, you know, I've got so much use out of it. Um, I don't mind the idea of passing it on. This deserves to be with someone who would really, really respect this. So the guitar will be on display at the Hard Rock Cafe. If people can go to juliansauctions.com to get more information. The auction takes place Hard Rock Cafe, May 18th and 19th in New York City, of course. And if you can't be in New York, you can go to julianslife.com where you can click those buttons, bid, and t bid against people in the room and hopefully take home this treasure. Now, whoever ends up with this guitar, I just, I, I gotta say, you gotta treat her with love because she has been an incredible workhorse. And the history on this instrument is phenomenal, as long as it goes into really good, loving hands. <laughs>